welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new die Tiny Gift Box Ghost Add-on. This add-on is so cute and it was designed to work with our Tiny Gift Box die. The great thing about this one is you can use it with the Tiny Gift Box or use it without and we're going to be showing you both things in the video today. So here are all of the Tiny Gift Box ghost pieces. You'll see we have that cute little ghost face and then some ghost body pieces. We also have some other little details so that you can add them to the ghost. We have a cute little bow and some rosy cheeks and some ghost wing arms and the most adorable little pumpkin ever that I just is my favorite part of the whole time. So now we're gonna start working with the ghost arms. There are actually two different ways to add arms onto this ghost. And so we're gonna be showing you this cool little piece here. So what you need to do is just line it up with the outside edges of the tiny gift box ghosts, kind of center it there, hold it in place with some low tack tape, and then run it through the die cut machine and it gives you these cute little arms and you can tuck things into the arms, which is just adorable. Then we also have those little out ghost arms and we'll show you how to use those in just a second. But first we're gonna start building the tiny gift box. And this tiny gift box is one of my favorites. One, because it's such a cute little size. You can put little treats inside. And my favorite is when I print out gift certificates, when I buy a gift certificate online with a piece of paper, I roll it up and I put it inside. But my other favorite part about the tiny gift box is that we have all these add-ons to turn it into different critters, like a deer and a hedgehog and a jack-o'-lantern and now this cute little ghost. So I love that you can kind of dress up this box to be so many cute little things. So we folded along all of the score lines that the Tiny Gift Box die created for us, and now we're adding some quarter inch double-sided tape to all of the tabs. Then all we need to do is peel up the liner paper on all the tabs and start to form the box. And to form the box, all you need to do is just line up all of these little edges. It's really easy to do, and that adhesive will just hold them in place. Then you will just tuck the lid to the inside to close the box. And now we can start working on decorating it. So you'll see there's that little kind of rounded piece there. What that is for is for adding the detail to the eyes and mouth of the ghost. So you can just put some adhesive on the back and layer that right on there. And the piece is just cut perfectly to do that quick little layer. Then you'll see we have those two pumpkin pieces. So there's the little detailed pumpkin and we're gonna layer it over the one with the stem and that'll give you your two different colors for pumpkin. And I wanna put this tiny pumpkin on everything. It's so adorable. Now you can do this ghost just out of plain cardstock. You could also do him in fun colors or even pearlescent vellum, but this is a really fun way to add some detail to the ghost. And we're just using a light blue green marker and going around all of the edges of the pieces. And you can see that it just gives it this nice pop and kind of that like eerie ghost feel. And then to blend out those edges, we're just gonna take the colorless blender and go all of the way around. And the nice thing is, is this doesn't have to be perfect, kind of like the more imperfect, the better, because it just gives it that fun look and it just adds that little extra detail. Then because we added some detail to the ghost pieces, we're also gonna add a little bit of detail to both the pumpkin and the bow, just picking markers that are similar in color, just to give that fun little shaded detail. And we'll do the same trick with the colorless blender here, just to blend those little marker details into the colored cardstock. It just gives it that nice finished look. For some more fun details, we're gonna take a white gel pen and just add a dot into each of these eyes. And I feel like it gives it this fun little cartoony look that is just so sweet. And then in this set, there are die cut rosy cheeks, but because we already had the marker detail, we decided to add some rosy cheeks with a marker. And you can just kind of create like little ovals under the eyes. And there's something about the rosy cheeks on the ghost that is just too cute. We'll also add a little white gel pen dot into each of those rosy cheeks. Then we can add some tape runner on the back and then layer this little ghost face onto the top of the box. And you'll see how it kind of lines up so there's a rounded part of his head at the top and then the little like ghost wavy pieces are extending past the bottom. Then we'll line up the one that has the little notch on the back and then the other two are for the sides. So once again, we can add some adhesive onto those and then layer them onto the sides of the box. And you'll see that the little kind of wavy ghost pieces will almost become like little legs he's standing on, which is a really, really cute look. Now for this ghost, we did that front arm style. And one of the best things about it is that those arms have a little die cut edge so you can tuck things inside. And so now he can hold that little pumpkin, which is just adorable. And then we can add that little bow in there. The bow could be a little hair bow or a bow tie, or you could not use the bow to whatever look you're going for. I just think this is just the cutest thing ever. And now we need to take a look at how to make the side arm ghost. So we're gonna start off by doing the same thing. We're gonna fold along all the score lines that the die created for us 
this. We'll add quarter inch tape on all of those tabs on the tiny gift box, and then we can peel up the liner paper and line up all of the edges to form the box. And then we can start to put this ghost together just like we did the other ghost. So we'll add the adhesive behind the eyes and mouth to layer our little rounded piece there to add some decorative detail to the eyes and mouth of the ghost. And we can layer some more adhesive on the back and put him on the front of the box. And then we'll layer the other pieces. So we have the one with the notch that goes on the back of the ghost. And then we have the two side ghost pieces. Now you'll see that on the face we did not add those little front arms. We did not die cut those because we're going to use the side arms. And so here is what they look like. And they have this like little score line right there. You can see it right there on those arms. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fold back along that piece. And then we're going to add some nice strong eighth inch double sided tape onto those two little tabs that we just folded. Then we can peel up that liner paper and we can attach these arms onto the ghost. And so we're gonna be putting these on the side and then you can just kind of eyeball and see where they're gonna look cute. We like to put them just a little bit kind of below the edge of the box and you'll see that he's gonna have this super cute little three-dimensional arm. Then you just need to line up the other arm. I like to look from above. It kind of makes it easiest to make sure they're at the kind of same height and depth as the other one. And now this little guy is just looking so cute. And the only detail that we're going to add to him is just a little white gel pen dot in the eyes because I just think that's adorable. And so you can see that just cut out of the white cardstock, he looks amazing. Or you can add all of those marker details that we did. And then here is the difference between the two characters. We have the super cute little one there holding the pumpkin with the front arms and then we have the sidearm ghosts and they're both adorable. I think it would be fun to make a whole bunch of them and use them for Halloween decorations along with the tiny gift box jack-o-lantern add-on too. And now Shari is going to use this tiny gift box ghost add-on on a card front without the tiny gift box. So take it away Shari! So I'm going to be taking the cute little tiny gift box ghost add-on and adding her to a card. I am going to cut the little hands that go in the front so that she can hold a little pumpkin. I'm adding the black piece that goes behind the eyes and the mouth to fill those in. And then of course there are these cute little cheeks that you can cut out and I've cut those from some ballet slipper cardstock. And then for the bow, I cut this from some purple glitter cardstock, which I think was fun. I love the cute little pumpkin in this set that it has a piece you layer with the stem in the back and then you can layer the color of the pumpkin on top to get that little green stem. And I'll just tuck this into her hands. And I think I'm going to make it to where she's holding it with both hands. So I'm just adding a little dot of glue between the two hands and then I'll tuck it in there. And then I'll set her aside while I work on more elements of my card. I have all of these stitch pumpkins cut out from different colors of cardstock. And I'm going to be doing some ink blending on each of them to give them some dark shading. I use fossilized amber on the pumpkin cut from sunflower cardstock. I use carved pumpkin on the fake tan pumpkin. I'm using crackling campfire on that pumpkin cut from canned pumpkin cardstock. And then I have uncharted mariner I'm using on that peacock cardstock pumpkin. That is one of my new favorite combinations. For the little stems here, I've cut all of them from cilantro cardstock. And I'm just adding a little bit of shading right at the base with some peeled paint distress ink. Then I will glue all the little tops onto my pumpkins. You can see I've already laid them out as to which stems I want on which pumpkin. And I'm just adding a tiny bit of liquid glue to the bottom of the stem and layering it along the top. And I used all those fun swirly stems for my big pumpkins and then I'll use that small stem for the little one. Now to create my background, I have a piece of Bristol cardstock cut with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles. I'm using Distress Oxides to create my sky. I started out with some milled lavender. Now this will be towards the bottom, kind of close to my pumpkins and my ghost and the ground. Then I'm going in with Wilted Violet is my middle color there. And then finally, my dark purple is Villainous Potion. And you can see I'm just going back and forth between each of my colors to blend them out so I don't have a harsh line. 
Now I'm adding some clean water and I'm going to pick that up with a paper towel to get some light splatters. Next I'm going in with some darker gold splatters. These were a little more subtle and didn't show up quite as much because they are that kind of deep gold color. You can kind of see them there, but I wanted a little more speckle, so I'm adding some black and I'm trying to be very particular about where these go and not add too many black splatters. So just a few here and there. I don't want it to be too filled. So I'll set my background aside to dry and then for the ground I'm using a piece of black glitter cardstock. This is cut to the same width as that rectangle and I'm using the grassy border die to cut the top. And it's going to create this beautiful glittery black grass which I think is really fun and I really like the look of this. I also have a piece of black licorice cardstock cut with the largest stitch rectangle and I will layer this onto my card base. This will give me a nice thin black frame around my ink panel. But I do want to go ahead and stamp my sentiment that says you're the pick of the patch and this is from the pick of the patch stamp set which is an older stamp set but I love the sentiments and the stamps in this set. I'm just lining it up across the top of this panel, picking it up with my misty door and then I'm stamping this in some VersaFine black ink because I have inked this with oxide inks. Then I can add this panel to my black piece of cardstock and I'm using liquid glue for this one just because this is a really thin black frame around here and I can kind of shift it around and make sure I've got it lined up with that stitching detail which is kind of hard to see on camera but the liquid glue lets me shift it around a little bit. Then I can pull out all my pumpkins that I shaded earlier and my cute little ghost and arrange them onto my card the way I want them to be And I wanted that little ghost to be peeking out from behind the pumpkins. So I'll just start adding my pumpkins. I'm adding this one with some liquid glue so it's directly onto that background. Then for my other pumpkins, I'm using a combination of thin foam squares, which is what I'm using on this tall pumpkin. And then I will use some regular thickness foam squares for this blue pumpkin, using a thin foam square where it will overlap the orange pumpkin. And then I will do the same with this little yellow one, adding some regular thickness foam squares so it's nice and popped up. And this gives me some different layers of dimension on my card and it will allow my little ghost to kind of slide behind that tall pumpkin like it's peeping out from behind that pumpkin. I guess she was hiding in the pumpkin patch and decided to jump out and show you her pick of the patch which is that cute little pumpkin in her hands. Then of course I have pulling out my stardust stickles and adding some magical glitter to the stems of the pumpkins because this is obviously a magic pumpkin patch. And then finally, I cut some stars from sunflower cardstock using the hearts and stars with skinny tag dye. I'm just adding a few of those to the sky with a little bit of liquid glue. And then here is my finished card, and I just think that this little ghost is so adorable, and she looks so cute in that pumpkin patch. Oh my goodness, Shari, this is so cute. I love how she's peeking out from behind the pumpkin patch. And next up, we have some incredible projects by the design team. And these little boxes by Elena are so cute. I love all the marker detail that she added to the different die cuts. Here, Audrey created a super cute card front using the giant trick or treat and the little ghost at the bottom, which is just too sweet. I love how Megan combined the tiny gift box ghost with the shadow box card Halloween add-on. The two together are just a perfect fit. And then Maureen combined the ghost with the new spooky forest backdrop and she made the cutest little lantern decorations with the pumpkin that's included with the ghost and I am in love with those. Callie's custom sentiment just makes me smile. I think it's so fun and so cute with these adorable ghosts. And then this card by Leticia is so much fun. I love the colors that she used and those fun stripes. It's so bold and her little eyelashes that she added on the ghosts are too cute. So we cannot wait to see what you guys come up with with this new tiny gift box ghost add-on. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.